Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot. I'm looking nervous because over there on the house kind of opposite, a few doors down, there is a few guys who are on the roof. That's making me nervous enough. Um, but they're on the chimney pot. And they've got one of those angle grindy things. Um, they're tying things on. They're doing, they're taking the aerial off the house. So I don't know how this is going to go. Okay, this is for Thursday, the 22nd, can you believe the 22nd, Moon in Sagittarius um, of December 2022. We're still in 2022. I want to show you my new calendar. So I just bought this and it arrived, I bought it from America and, oh, I <laughs> put the other camera on, and it arrived within four days which is quicker than anyone in the UK can get anything to me. Christmas cards and whatnot are all taking about 100 years. Um, so this is Susan Miller. And you know me, I am not financially connected to Susan Miller or anything to do with Susan Miller. You don't really want to see the floor. Um, but I, this is good. I really like it. So if you're in the UK, it's a bit steep because you have to pay quite a lot, like almost more in postage than you do for the calendar. So I'm not sure, but if you're in America, oh yeah, I'd recommend this. So the reason I like it is because it has all of this info, the zones, the aspects, the full moons, the new moons, the eclipses, your natal chart, your sun, your rising sign. I follow her horoscopes anyway online. Um, I've always found her really accurate and I've been following them since the beginning. Um, integrated information, cripes scan codes i probably won't do any of that you know and then you've got a really good thing where you get loads of different um years but what i really really like apart from the artwork which i really like so that's capricorn so it hangs on the wall like that is and we're going to be using this in some of the dailies most of the reason i bought it is that you get things like if you look at this on new year's day you will get decent astrological information like Mercury sextile Jupiter. Mercury sextile Jupiter. There you go. It's a whole new planet, Jupiter, um, on New Year's Day, and it will give you a bit of blurb on different days. With it's kind of got that chatty, friendly astrological aspect, but it's also got the hardcore astrology going on as well. I don't think it replaces my Astrocal Moon Diary, but it's certainly something to use in tandem it's very nice quality and i'm really impressed by it so yeah have a look i don't know if she's got offers on or what but she has got a website she she has a website <laughs> i know people have these newfangled things called websites i have a website i must actually do something with my website right okay let's get the old christmas tarot cards out shall we was, is there any point going back to, to the other one, to the face? I don't think so. Right. Oops. And I'll bring you breaking news from the chimney pot. Obviously getting it ready for Father Christmas. He'd never have fitted down it otherwise. It did look really grim. It was like there was a, like a full brick missing. I always thought that thing was going to just fall into the street. Okay. What do we need to know? What do we need to know? What do we need to know? So tomorrow we've got a new moon in Capricorn. How deliciously lovely. That's nice. We're sliding into Mercury retrograde, aren't we? I can sort of just start to feel it. Let me know in the comments section whether you can. Oh, that's nice. I love these because they look like sweets. I think they are sweets, actually. Those kind of hard boiled sweets that after a certain age you're too afraid to have, aren't you? In case you break a crown or something. I know. Ditto with like caramel. I'm not really all over the caramels anymore. And the boys got braces. So this Christmas, the chocolate thing, normally, you know, get him a massive Toblerone. Well, Father Christmas will get him a massive Toblerone. Um, various other things like the Cadbury's Christmas stocking. But no, not this year. This year I've got to get in much softer, posher chocolates. Otherwise, <laughs> to be honest, it's a false economy because it will just yank the brace out. Oof. Okay. Oof. Oh, cr 
stripes. That's not very catch. Oh, they're pentacles, aren't they? God. You have to get up pretty early in the morning to catch me out, don't you, people? Okay, cool. I love this deck, can I just say. Um, I can't remember any... I bought it ages. I bought it in the summer when I bought that other crazy winter deck. So I can't remember anything about it, ex except I got it from somewhere fairly generic, and it was cheap. It didn't cost very much, and I think it's called the Radiant Winter Wonderland or something like that. Um, it's really nice quality, and the pictures are nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Nine of sugar canes or the nine of wands. Feeling a little bit guarded, feeling a little bit like you need to be, for some reason I want to say, on your best behaviour. Um, what I'm noticing here is we've got a lamp and it kind of reminds me somewhat of the hermit. So just bear in mind hermit qualities. And I don't know about you, but um, this time of year, I get even more hermity than I normally am. And I'm quite hermity as it is. Um, I'm really sociable, but also very hermity all at the same time. And I think it's natural at this time of year to feel um, drawn to the fire. You know, I've got a wood burner thing and yeah, it's nice. It's nice to just stare at it. It's something very kind of, um, I was going to say medieval, but I mean like almost prehistoric. You know what I mean, about staring at a fire and staying in a bit and taking stock and it being the turn of the year and all that stuff. And let me know if you have any little rituals that you do towards the end of the year. We talked about reviewing, but just let me know if you have any rituals. Okay, these are very nice because we've got the six of oh, whatever these, of hard, hard sweets. Um, can anybody tell me what they're called? I can't remember. They're like minty, minty hard sweets like your granny used to have. And God knows how, because my granny probably had dentures. So, you know, she was really rocking it if she could suck one of those sweets. Um, so look, six of pentacles or six of sweets and the three of pentacles. A sense of belonging and a sense of joining in while at the same time, and this is it, you can be sociable and be the hermit. And I know they do those tests like, are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? And then everybody goes, do you know what? I'm a bit of both. And I think everybody's a bit of both. We're all a bit of both. So you want to belong. Maybe you're getting that holiday feeling, that whole, you know, John Lewis Christmas advert type feeling, wanting to belong. But at the same time, there's a feeling of wanting to be slightly separate. Now, remember, we've got Mercury retrograde coming up, so things get a bit jumbly, and I think the chariot in reverse really represents that. If we, I love this. I love, 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 love reindeers, okay? Just <coughs> love me a reindeer. Um, so this is gorgeous, and it's just, I don't know, I like the fact that they've done it quite seriously. Um, chariot in reverse, you've got the conflict between two things, two people, two ways of doing things. And I can feel that conflict. It feels like it. It feels conflicting and it feels like, it feels like it's not worth controlling. So just go with the conflict. You wanna go out, you wanna stay in, you wanna be sociable, you wanna be unsociable. Just see where the cards fall for you over the holiday period because you can accommodate all of it. Knight of Pentacles in reverse, interesting energy because of course we're in Capricorn season, but which is normally quite, for me, a steady season. You know, I'm gonna clean out this stuff in the house, I'm gonna get organized, I'm gonna be practical, um, I'm gonna plant the bulbs that I should have planted in November, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but when it's in reverse, you, maybe you're going to feel like that and maybe you're going to feel a little bit naughty and like you don't want to do the jobs that you're supposed to do. And honestly, I think there's something in not always doing the jobs that you're supposed to do. And I know that might just be because I'm a bit slovenly and, you know, I'm a stranger to the broom, as it were. But sometimes, you know, like I've got relatives who have completely Tupperwared their whole life. You know, that kind of, I don't know if you have Tupperware um, anywhere outside the UK, but the Tupperware is 
I'm probably you probably do um, a certain brand of like those plastic lunch boxes and there are just you know those people I, I just feel deeply suspicious where all their money is managed into folders and then all of their lunches is frozen into Tupperware containers and then they've batch cooked for the next 6,000 years and it's kind of like organization porn isn't it that you want to watch it and I watch it on TikTok and I watch it to relax and to not do it to have the pleasure of not doing it is almost it's definitely better than the pleasure of doing it and I feel like sometimes if you become so organized that all you can think about is how organized you are and you never have the opportunity for a bit of chaos um, you're stressed out anyway all the time stressed out by upkeep of your organization so I feel like there's going to be a little bit of um, conflict between those two things and between saving and spending as well and that's the same thing obviously you need to have a sensible saving plan and you don't just need to splurge any money you've got especially if you haven't got much money it's definitely not a good idea but also there's something around when you are over saving and this is probably for people who have disposable income really if you're over saving you can become obsessed by saving and watching your savings and I know there's loads of myths on this you know where you get a pot of gold and then you know trying to stop anyone burying it in the garden all of that anxiety there's a balance to be struck here between being yourself being free not being an idiot about things but also not over tupperwareing the situation and then we get the magician and the magician is that's a really gorgeous card isn't it i love this i just feel like the person who did this had a smile on their face um i love that so the magician here we've got this elf how beautiful and it just reminds us the magician that there is magic in all things no matter what those things are whether it seems very unmagical and more money orientated or whatever it is leave room for a bit of magic okay we got there people let me know what you think of the calendar anyway either way you might already have one and i'll see you tomorrow namaste